All right, back with another episode of A Better NFL Top 100. We are now going 90 through 81. Um, If you missed the uh, last episode, I gave kind of a longer explanation as to what this is, but just the real quick uh, cliff notes are, you know, again, it's my pick from top 100 uh, to all the way to one. I am uh, counting down every day. I make one of these uh, at two uh, Eastern unless there's a podcast that day. And uh, it's not taking positional value into account. That's what I'm doing here. And again, the a better to- uh, NFL top 100, a little bit tongue in cheek. It's more of just a, a fun uh, exercise. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into the list. Uh, you know, this section starting with number 90. I went with Christian Barmore, the interior defensive lineman for the New England Patriots, who's actually been really good. Again, not going to get a ton of credit, and this is part of why I like doing this list, is I do get to shine light on someone like Christian Barmore, who just people don't talk about because he's an interior defensive lineman who plays for the Patriots. Like, you're only going to get talked about that way if you're like awesome. And to be honest, he's been pretty awesome. So like, yeah, uh, that's why I decided to put him on the list. Number 89, another quarterback, a lot of quarterbacks kind of high on this list. He's actually the fourth quarterback already on the list, and there's another one in this uh, video that we'll talk about in just a second. But, you know, uh, coming off the Achilles injury, is getting up there in age, although still is just 35. There's reason to believe he could be good for a few years. Uh, Definitely, though, I think with the Achilles, that's going to hurt him a little bit. Was really good before the injury last year, so... I definitely like that, but, you know, uh, as of right now, as where it stands, I think 89 feels fair. Again, not taking positional value into account. Number 88, we have Dallas Goddard, the tight end from uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, who has really kind of just been a consistently good tight end for them. Like, he does pretty much everything well. He blocks well. He receives well. So kind of having that dual threat uh, tight end that has really been helpful for them. I think he was an underrated piece. He was very good in that Super Bowl run, and I think was still very good last year as well. So definitely, I think, deserves a spot on the list, even if he isn't the flashiest player, still a very valuable one. Number 87 is a player that I'm sure Steelers fans will believe should be higher on the list. Uh, Maybe some non-Steelers fans will believe that as well. He's a a really good player, Minka Fitzpatrick. I I think the reason why I'm a little bit lower on him than other people tend to be is I do analyze his film and I see some inconsistency with his game. He makes the the splash plays, but then he will make some plays where I feel he could be in better position. And it's the kind of thing where when you're a safety, uh, if you get yourself out of position, the audience isn't going to blame you because then they don't see you until the ball gets over there. And then they're like, oh, well, he wasn't anywhere close. What was he supposed to do? Well, part of that is sometimes his fault. Uh, Sometimes he will kind of bite on a play early on. That being said, Usually when he bites on a play early on, it's for a good reason, and he's making a splash play, which is why I still have him on this list at 87. He's a really good player, just kind of explaining why maybe some people would have him higher than I do. But uh, yeah, as a whole, again, the athleticism is fantastic, so that's why he's 87. 86 is Patrick Queen, who is, uh, so another Steelers player uh, who, you know, he was with the ball, a linebacker for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, they, the Steelers just signed him in the offseason. A guy who, uh, you know, uh, I'll be honest, I, I think I'm just the only person who thinks of him this highly. I don't know why. I feel like a lot of people, I mean, I understand it. He came into the league and was not great right away. He just wasn't. But the I felt like he was really good last year. I think there's some concern of like going to a different scheme. What are we going to get from Queen? That's totally fair. But like, I don't know. If he again, I thought he was great last year. And he had shown like he had consistently gotten better year after year, too. It's not just a complete one year wonder. So that's why I have him at eighty six. 85 is Brock Purdy, who, like, I, I'm sorry, like, this is where I have him. I, I know people are going to say, but he was an MVP candidate last year. Well, I didn't think he deserved to be an MVP candidate last year. Again, not taking positional value into account. I think he's a, you know, uh, I, I, I can't try to remember if I had him as a top 10 quarterback. I'm not sure if I did, actually. But to me, that's where I view him, is a fringe top 10 quarterback. There's a lot to like about his game. Uh, I think that his game management stuff is, is solid. I actually think where he's at his best is when a play breaks down. And like, I think that for his contract, he's great. He fits that scheme so perfectly well that like, you know, Fort Harris fans are very happy to have him. 85 on a list of top 100 players is a compliment, but again, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be taken that way with Purdy, but 
that that's where I have him. Number 84 is Lane Johnson. Another guy I could see getting some, uh, this this could be a, a controversial take having him just at 84. I really like Lane Johnson, and I've been a defender of Lane Johnson. Not that there's been a lot of uh, people who aren't defenders of Lane Johnson, but I've been higher on Lane Johnson in the past than even other people are. Uh, I just think that, you know, Listen, he's in his mid-30s. Uh, he got banged up last year, and I didn't think it was at his best last year. Maybe that was because of the injury. I, I think there was talk that he was, I think he was just, in fact, playing injured uh, during part of it. But I even thought without that, I thought that there was, it was not his best year. Granted, not his best year is still a top 100 player, like, easily. So I'm not saying he's a bad player or anything like that. There's still so much great stuff, but it's just like, Again, this is what makes the list difficult of, you know, it's a right now list. How do I expect you to be right now? I still expect him to be really good, but that's why I kind of docked him some points. And 83, Tyron Smith, who, I mean, you could flip these guys if you wanted to. They're kind of the same thing because, like, Tyron Smith is awesome when he's on the field. The issue is he's gotten injury, you know, injuries, uh, so he's missed playing time. The difference between Smith and Johnson for me is Tyron Smith is someone that, when he's been on the field, we haven't seen his play dip at all. He's still been, like, honestly, debatably the best tackle in football when healthy. Like, it's just he can't stay healthy. So his situation is a little different than Johnson's in that aspect, which is why I put him still at 83. But, like, doesn't matter how good you are if you're not playing. So that's why I couldn't put him any higher. Number 82, I want Xavier McKinney, the new Green Bay Packer. You know, he was with the uh, New York Giants, uh, came, you know, uh, signed a big deal with the Packers as safety. And honestly, being a safety in that giant situation and putting together the season that he put together is ridiculously impressive. That was not easy to, uh, you know, get a good season out of. And yet he was able to do it. So I think that the bit of a small sample size of him being good definitely has to hurt him a little bit and going to a new scheme we'll see how it works even though you would assume it would be better going from uh, the Giants to the Packers let's be honest the Packers aren't exactly uh, you know an elite coverage unit around him either but should be still an upgrade so we'll see what happens but yeah was was amazing last year so that's why he's at 82 and then 81 another tackle so three tackles in four spots here Braden Smith the tackle for the Indianapolis Colts who again part of what I like doing about these lists kind of bookending this video with you know starting with Barmore ending with Braden Smith get to pick some guys that don't always get the credit they deserve that's not why I'm putting him on the list he's just deserves this spot he's really good he's been a consistently good tackle now uh and so because of that I think he belongs uh at 81 on this list. So yeah, those are 90 through 81. I'll be back uh, with another one uh, tomorrow. Again, ev duties every day on Tuesday unless there's a podcast. So be on the lookout for the next one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.